Hello students, welcome to the first chemistry session of your online class. Today we are going to discuss the fourth chapter of your chemistry part that is the atomic structure. So when we say atomic structure, the atom word that is came into our mind. Okay, so in this chapter we will learn about the subatomic particles like electrons, protons and neutrons. Then we will learn about the atomic number and mass number. Then we will learn about the valency, which is the combining capacity of elements. Okay. Now moving on to the next slide, we have what is an atom. So suppose you have a sugar or salt, a small amount of sugar or salt in your hand. Can you count the number of particles in your hand? No. Why? Because those particles are very, very small. We cannot count this with our naked eye okay now see we can say that the first point is what is an atom the atom is the smallest unit of element if we keep breaking down an element until we get the smallest unit which cannot be split or break further we get the atoms okay now the second point is what different elements have different properties like for hydrogen element and the oxygen element we have both the atoms of the hydrogen and oxygen element will have different properties okay now moving on to the third point third point we have every atom exhibits all the properties of the element like for oxygen element the atoms which have, which the oxygen element have will have the same property and it will exhibit the properties of that particular element now in the fourth point we have see atoms cannot be seen with the naked eyes okay we cannot see the atoms with our naked eyes we will need the special equipment to see the atoms of an element okay these are the four points for what is an atom now moving on to the next slide we have the history of atom the history of the atom for the first time the acharya kanara gave the idea of the atom okay now see at kanara's paramanu Acharya Kanara put forward the idea of a particle that could not be divided any further. So first of all, Acharya Kanara gave the idea of a particle. He named those particles as Paramanu. Paramanu, the Param means the smallest and Anu means the particles. That's why he gave the name Paramanu. So he recorded his idea on the Bhaisheshika Sutra. Okay. Now the second theory is the theory of the universe by Democritus. So who is Democritus? Democritus is a Greek philosopher who gave the idea of the theory of the universe. According to Democritus, see, if a piece of matter is divided until it could not be divided further, a fundamental or basic unit would be reached. And he named that partic particle as atom. Okay. He called this theory as the theory of the universe. Why? Because it covered all the matter in the universe. Okay. Now we are moving to the next slide. That is Dalton's atomic theory. So John Dalton, he was an English chemist, physicist and meteorologist. Okay. In the year 1809, John Dalton proposed the atomic theory. For the first time, he proposed the atomic theory. Then he gave some postulates about that theory. The first postulate is that all matter consists of small indivisible particles called atom. Indivisible that means we cannot break it furthermore. Okay. Now moving on to the second point. Atoms can neither be created nor destroyed. Like energy. We cannot create energy nor we can destroy it. Like atoms we cannot create it or neither we can destroy it. Okay. The third point is all the atoms of an element exhibit identical properties. That means like for hydrogen, there are two atoms. Both the atoms will exhibit the same properties or identical properties. But atoms of one element differ from atoms of another element. Like in the hydrogen atom, there are two atoms. In the oxygen atom, there are two atoms. Though those two atoms of hydrogen and hydrogen element and those two atoms of oxygen element will have different properties. Okay, now moving on to the next point, point number four. 
see when elements react their at their atoms combine in simple whole number ratios to form compounds for the reaction of carbon dioxide okay we have one carbon atom and two oxygen atom both will combine in a simple whole number ratio see for carbon it is one and for oxygen it is two both will combine and it will form the product of carbon dioxide which is in the whole number ratio okay now the five fifth point is during a chemical reaction atoms of the reactants do not change they only get rearranged to form products like in the same reaction carbon dioxide the atom of the carbon and the atoms of the oxygen they do not get mixed okay they just rearrange to form the product okay now we are going to going to the next slide next slide is delton uh, despite of his postulates delton failed to answer the most important questions uh, the question is see what was the atom itself made of many years later scientists proved that atoms are made up of three subatomic particles which are the electrons protons and neutrons electrons are negatively charged protons are positively charged and neutrons are neutrals that means it does not carry any charge okay now now we get, get that there are three subatomic particles of an atom which are electrons protons and neutrons so first of all we'll learn about the discovery of an electron so first of all william crookes he was a british scientist first of all what he did in the year 1879 he first observed the electron okay how he performed an experiment with a vacuum glass tube okay connected with two electrodes see two electrodes electrodes means what electrodes are used to provide current through non metal objects this glass tube is a non metal object yes or no see this one is vacuum vacuum this means the air air inside the glass has been removed okay then he placed two plates electrodes first one is cathode and second one is anode both the plates are connected to an external source of energy cathode is negatively charged always and anode is positively charged so when high voltage when high high voltage is applied to the cathode what will happen the cathode will there will be a beam will float from the cathode to anode and it will pass through the hole in the anode and it will ultimately strike the screen or fluorescent screen or we can say phosphor coating this beam is called the cathode ray okay these cathode rays were invisible actually these cathode rays were invisible that means we cannot see it with our naked eyes that's why we use the special screen call fluorescent screen or phosphorescent screen so when this beam struck the screen what will happen a dot will appear on it using this technique what we did the scientist made the crt monitors or crt tv tvs okay so this is how the cathode rays were first observed now we'll learn about it in the thomson's observations so thompson what he did the sir jj thompson he was an english physicist he studied the properties of the cathode ray and made some important observations for which he was actually awarded the nobel prize in physics in the year 1906 what is his first observation first observation is that cathode rays always travel in a straight line in the previous figure you have seen that the cathode rays have been traveling in a straight the first observation of thomson is that cathode rays always travel in a straight line so when we when the charged plates were placed around the tube what will happen the cathode ray will deflect it away from the negative plate and it will it will be deflected towards the positive plates what it suggests it suggests that cathode rays contain the negatively charged particles okay next point is that the beam cast a shadow of fan placed in its path which suggests that it travel in a straight line you can place any object fan or any object you can place always the pen also okay so it suggests that that cathode ray always travel in a straight line 
नेक्स्ट वन द मास ऑफ इच पार्टिकल इन ए कैटोड रे वाज मोर देन 100 टाइम्स लाइटर देन ए हाइड्रोजन एटम सो इट विल बी लाइटर देन ए हाइड्रोजन एटम सो दीज आर द ऑब्जर्वेशंस मेड बाय थॉमसन ओके नेक्स्ट द आर मिलिकन व्हाट ही डिड इन हिज ऑयल ड्रॉप एक्सपेरिमेंट ही डिटरमाइन द चार्ज ऑफ एन इलेक्ट्रॉन ओके द व्हाट इज द चार्ज ऑफ एन इलेक्ट्रॉन it is the minus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs here coulombs is the unit of charge then he also determined the mass of the electron which is 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 28 gram now moving on to the next slide we have we have a video see this one is the glass tube it, it is a vacuum glass tube. The external external source is connected to the cathode and the anode. This one is the anode and this one is the cathode. Cathode is negatively charged and anode is positively charged. So when the high voltage is applied, what will happen? The cathode ray will travel through the or pass through the hole in the anode and it will strike the screen. So with the help of the screen, we can say that that the cathode ray always travel in a straight line okay see this one is the fluorescent screen we always use fluorescent screen or phosphorescent screen so when we apply the electric field now see we'll apply the electric field that means we are placing two plates one is negatively charged and one is positively charged around the tube now see what will happen the cathode ray which was travel in a straight line it will be deflected away from the negative plate and it will be deflected towards the positively charged plate that means what the cathode ray contains negatively charged particles this is the observation of thompson okay now moving on to the next slide we have plum pudding model so based on his discovery that means thompson's discovery he predicted the structure of the atom okay the based on his discoveries thompson predicted the structure of the atom according to his pre prediction each atom is like a sphere filled with fluid of positive charge where negatively charged particles are suspended okay now see this figure this is Thomson's plum pudding model. Okay, now this yellow colored particles are electrons according to the according to Thomson, and those are suspended in this positively positively charged fluid. Okay, so why he call it a plum pudding model? Now six next now next figure. See the next figure. Now see this one is the pudding according to Thomson, and this uh, violet color is according to thompson these violet colors are electrons okay so negatively charged plums are actually resembles the electrons that are suspended or embedded inside the pudding okay so now this is uh, this much is for today and in the next class we will discuss the discovery of the nucleus okay thank you